Good morning, everyone. So I am just about to head out. I'm warming my car. Today is Tuesday. And on today's schedule is three different thrift stores and one retail store, Ross Dress for Less. I'm going to pop in there and see if they have their third week of January clearance going on. I recently learned about this. Now, I have sourced at TJ Maxx and Ross. I don't find a lot. I know I usually stop in TJ Maxx for their yellow tag clearance. I don't buy a lot of retail arbitrage because I don't want to pay up for my items. But I've heard that Ross Dress for Less has items on clearance as cheap as 49 cents so I'll use my judgment and see if I think things are worth it but definitely three thrift stores on the plan for today one quite close to me and two a little bit of a trip away probably a good 45 minutes so I have my lunch packed and all ready to go excited to see what treasure awaits for me today so stick along hit that like and subscribe button and we'll get started Last year, I learned about clearance at Ross Dress for Less. I learned about this on YouTube, other people making uh, videos about it, where Ross does a store-wide clearance and puts a ton of items on clearance for 49 cents. I heard that the sale runs around the third week of January, so I stopped into my local Ross to see what was going on. Now, I did go into the store the second week of January, and did not find this to be true in my location. This location is on Route 30 in Lancaster, but let's go in and see what is on sale and what the store is looking like after the holidays. The first area I always hit are the bins of things, <laughs> maybe because I'm comfortable with bins of items. Here I'm looking at a lip gloss, $6.99, and some skincare, $17.99. Now those are both marked down, but nowhere near the 49 cents I'm hearing about. The store did appear to be quite wiped out. Here's a glitter set, I believe left over from the holidays, 99 cents. And I start to realize I should be looking at maybe less expensive items you know, low-end items so that if something is marked down for, to 49 cents, you know, I'd be able to find it quicker. But there, both those things seem to be regular price. Then I thought maybe gift sets, things left over from the holidays again. Here's a pack of mascaras. But again, I'm not finding that 49 cent tag. This was $4.99. Now this might be new stock. This might be, you know, items coming in for the holidays, items coming in for Valentine's Day and spring. I don't do a lot of retail arbitrage. When I find something I pick up or wipe out the store of their complete inventory, if it's something that I'm gonna commit to, I do this at Nike, Pottery Barn, uh, a few other stores that I won't disclose. And I've had fairly good luck, but you know, to be truthful, I have greater profit capability with items that I'm finding at my thrifts. To me, these cosmetic travel cases were not anything spectacular and the prices seemed very high to me. Here I'm catching a shot of myself in the mirror. This is what I look like when I go out thrifting. No tassel earrings, stretchy clothes, always stretchy pants. And my good old Michael Kors jacket. I love this jacket. It's a down jacket, packable. I've had this for many years and it's always my go-to for thrifting because I can fold this jacket down and stick it in my handbag. Love that. Here I'm getting sidetracked, having nothing to do with retail arbitrage or clearance hunting. But as you guys know, I've been trying to redecorate my YouTube studio and I always love to find little tables and stools I thought this elephant was just so cute, so bohemian. I love that tapestry fabric. Here's another little elephant down here. How cute are these? I didn't wind up picking up either one of these, but I love looking at home goods, tables, any little decorative piece. Now, like I said, this store is well wiped. I don't know if they just haven't restocked. I do have a tendency to love these kind of little travel on wheels cabinets. And I liked that this one was wood. $80, way too high in my opinion. Oh, 
I'm also on the hunt for a small white mohair pillow. You know the long hair mohair, I think it's called? There's a name to it. Um, it's escaping me right now. I'm on the hunt for a white one for the chair that I've put in my YouTube studio. I thought that would be pretty. I find that Ross does not have the quality of Home Goods and TJ Maxx, and I always thought that these were, you know, sister stores. They were all under the same umbrella. Now, the employee that I spoke with at this Ross said they are not, which is news to me. So if you guys have any information, if Ross is part of the parent group with Home Goods and TJ Maxx, could you leave me a comment down below? Thanks, guys. So again, just back on the hunt, looking for items with that 49 cent tag. Here we find 749, cute lights, but I don't know that I would pick up lights at this time of year. I thought these flamingos and the heron was great fun. I love a good bird. <laughs> I love birds. I love fish. Not in real life. You know, I don't I don't keep them in real life. I don't have pets. But I do like animals represented in figurines or statues on printed material. I filmed this area because look at these shelves. Looks like a little, I don't know, a little craziness. A tornado blew through here. The shelves were so empty. I know a lot of the bigger resellers that do sneakers and shoes hit up the Burlington Coat Factory, the Rosses. I don't find that my Ross has very good clearance or very good prices on sneakers. Now here, these are clearance. $8.99 for a pair of slippers, in my opinion, is not a clearance price. Now it is Betsy Johnson, but still, I don't find that that, you know, price is warranted. Here I'm looking at some Kate Spade. I believe these were wallets. Uh, no, there were stockings. Five dollars. A lot of the store looked like this. I have never seen a store this empty. So even if they were doing a major reset, maybe, I'm not sure. Now these shoes were $3.99, but there were nine West. I don't know that anybody really wants to wear a lightning bolt on their, on their instep, but okay. I decided to start looking at women's clothing, cozy sweaters, if you could maybe any of the Christmas sweaters, $9.99. The brands that Ross carry to me don't compare to the brands that uh, TJ Maxx gets. Now these items that we're looking at were on uh, a clearance rack, a, a rack marked clearance. But again, I didn't really find any crazy good prices. $9.99 again. Thought that was a little bit cute. You know, I like the style of it. But $9.99, I didn't feel once I checked comps on this name. I didn't think it warranted picking that up. I liked this puffy coat, this poodle coat. I'm not quite sure what these coats are called. I liked the style of it and I liked the uh, texture of it, but I did not like the color of it. I could be wrong about that. So I wound up putting that back. I felt if anything was going to be marked down, it would be the sweaters that, you know, would be common for the, for the Christmas holiday. $5.99. 
$5.99 I thought was a good price for this reindeer, but I'd have to sit on this, I'm pretty sure at this point, for the better part of a year. Now, because I don't know that tag, I did wind up running comps on that. Thought that was super cute for $6, and then I thought I might pick it up for myself. But I felt that this might get very linty very quick. And because I work around fiber so much, and there's a lot of fiber in my house, I have to vacuum almost every day, I felt like I really didn't want to look at myself all linty. And then I started to see more of this brand. I felt the love logo, the spell out, was interesting. So I did wind up picking up quite a few of these. I scanned the racks quickly and felt that if I was gonna do you know, a bulk buy, I would purchase these. I did wind up running comps on this type of sweater. And again, the profit capability was not there. So I wound up putting all of these back. Again, switching over to shopping for myself. <laughs> Every sparkly thing catches my eye. I loved this sweater for myself. I thought this was great and I wound up not picking it up. I didn't think the price was low enough. I'm so spoiled by thrift stores. And I also felt it looked pilly and I'm not a big fan of a pilly looking sweater. And now I'm starting to look at the clearance dress rack. I thought this knitted jumper was super cute for the holidays. It's like a, a pants jumper but they wanted $7 for it. If that would have been, I don't know, $2, I would have picked that up. A couple of little Santa knit dresses. But these were novelty, cute, you know, something for a Christmas party, an ugly Christmas sweater party, it would be fun. But after going through this rack, there was nothing near 49 cents, and a lot of the prices were way too high for a clearance after season markdown. So I did leave Ross empty-handed, nothing for myself and nothing for retail arbitrage. I will probably pop in one more time right around the 21st of the month to see if I'm seeing any of the 49 cent tags. Leave me a comment down below if you have watched any of the YouTube videos that are getting a lot of views for Rosses that do have the 49 cent clearance. I've heard that Ross in some areas tries to clear out the store and the amount of 49 cent markdowns are ridiculous. So quite a few YouTubers slash resellers do quite well for this sale, but at this point, I am not seeing it in my area. Can you guys believe that there is a Goodwill out here? I call this my country Goodwill. It's about 40 minutes from my house up north, and the store is surrounded by Amish houses and cow barns. But if there's a Goodwill to be found, I'm on it. I have actually done quite well at this Goodwill. This Goodwill is in East Earl, Pennsylvania. So if you get a chance to come to this store, you want to make that trip. This Goodwill is really quaint. It has wooden floors and really sweet employees again, but the aisles are very tightly packed. So I'm going to try to film a little bit in this store. I don't know that they would really want me filming here, but I didn't see any signs against filming. So let's see what we can find. This first item is a hand crocheted, I believe this is called Granny Square Quilt, or Afghan is probably a more common term for knitted and crocheted blankets. I thought the colorway was good, but I put it in my cart to think about it. I wasn't sure. I have a tendency to like the Afghans with brighter colors. Faux fur always catches my attention. And I wasn't sure what this piece was, but I think it wound up being a wrap and I said no. Now the people that shop in from this community really know their linens and it's harder to find good linens in this store. So when I come here, I do check the aisles, but it's rare that I've found, you know, good quilts or other items of high quality in the linen section. The pricing in this store is fairly consistent with other thrift stores in Pennsylvania. I would say it's mid-range prices. I believe dresses went between 4 and $6. I have 
found a few good items in this store clothing wise, but the items I found were more like vintage clothing that I didn't recognize the tag. It wasn't anything contemporary that I can remember. The items that I have done well with from this store was a silk smoking jacket from England that I believe I found in the bins of this store, which is downstairs. I'll show you that. And that I believe uh, was early in my reselling time here and it brought over $100. A uh, few other items that I found, again, vintage, silk, wool, items like that coming out of houses that you could tell the item, you know, was really well cared for. But the contemporary clothing, I'm unable to fill my cart in this store. But I do like to visit this store for the hard goods, so that's probably what I'm going to find more of today. I've mentioned before I don't pick up a lot of leather jackets. I find them very heavy and costly to ship, but I do look at a lot of leather shoes in this store. Here I'm feeling the texture of this coat. I always look at overcoats and I pick up a lot of times camel hair and cashmere. Those are my two go-to materials for long overcoats. I liked these sneakers, but $25, absolutely no. <laughs> I thought that was a little nervy of them. I'm still learning sneakers, so I don't pick up a lot of them unless I can get them for probably about $4. Now I could look up, you know, the, the tag numbers but in a very small store, it's hard to be on my phone filming and then stop the filming and go into, you know, an eBay comp search. So just know that when I'm not filming, I probably have a tendency to look up comps and take a chance on a few more things than when I'm filming. So becoming a YouTube creator has changed my thrifting habits a little bit. I'm going to have to make probably extra trips to buy the amount of inventory that I'm used to buying. When you look through a camera and you're looking at inventory and keeping an eye on the screen, it does cut down on what you're able to find. I thought these shoes were good, but again, I didn't think Echo was a good enough name and they did have a few spots on the leather but I might have taken a chance on these or looked up comps at least if I had not been filming. As you can see, the clothing racks are full in this store. I have to say shopping in this store is very enjoyable. I don't know if it's the country vibe or it feels like a real treasure hunt. That's probably what it is. I love a good treasure hunt. These shoes were Oakwoods. I had never heard of Oakwoods before. And the Made in USA seemed interesting, but see the bottom of that shoe? The leather did not look like high quality if in fact it was leather. I didn't take time to look at them. I do pick up rock ports, but not at $10 a shoe with the seams splitting. This is Bostonian. I don't pick up Bostonian. Now H&M, that last pair of shoes, I almost never pick up in shoe wear, famous last words, 
But I believe H&M, the real H&M, not the outlet, did a collaboration with Balmain. And you want to look at those comps. Balmain is a very high-end company, as far as I know. And when H&M did a collab with them, the items were crazy high. I believe I found, I think it was a blouse when I first started, and I was thrilled to find that. If I'm not mistaken, that blouse went for three or four hundred dollars and it was pre-owned. The wingtip style is probably my number one style for looking at in a men's shoe. And now we are downstairs in this store. This is the reason I come here. I do like the clothing and, and the linens upstairs, but I love the hard goods that come into this store. A lot of vintage stuff, you know, a lot of things that you really don't need to pick up, but quite a few items, you know, are very interesting. Now here, many of you that play golf are probably saying she missed a Nike driver, but it did have damage. I do like to find Nike golf clubs. I don't know what I'm reaching in for. Another driver, but that was a, a no brand. I could tell by the shaft of it. So as we go up and down these aisles, I think you guys are gonna see what I'm talking about as far as what this store is able to sell, what their donations look like. I thought that toolbox was good, but too heavy and too big to ship. Unless it was a good brand, probably not. If you're interested in selling tools or toolboxes, you really wanna run comps from highest to lowest and see what brings good money. I thought this, I'm gonna call it mercury glass, it's probably not what this is. And it was like an egg. It was very interesting, but it was a no name. And like I said before, these aisles are tiny, very hard to get a cart up and down. So I'm gonna to try to do the best I can filming and not film people. I try to always be respectful of that. These next pots are a common thing. They're very cheaply made, plastic handles, plastic lids. Or, or knobs, I should say, with a decorator pattern. Most of it is made in China. I never buy that. I could tell these cups, these goblets were not real silver, but I always like to look to see if they're marked. Some silver plate will bring good money too. I know the peach pie keeper, uh, some people collect those, but the shipping weight and the work of shipping not worth the profit in my opinion. This next piece was a student piece, student art, and it was not symmetrical, so I wound up not picking that up. This plate is a souvenir piece. They wanted 99 cents, which I thought was fair for somebody collecting these, but I didn't feel there was enough profit capability built into that. And you're waiting for that buyer who's either collecting those or lives in that state and the piece speaks to them. These two cherubs I thought were very good, but as you can tell, they were oversprayed. So I don't pick up anything spray painted. You know, I shouldn't say it that way. I should say I don't pick up any pottery figurines or statues that are oversprayed. I thought these rabbits were sweet, and I'm trying to remember why I did not pick them up. They must have had a chip. Yep, there it is. A chip on the ear. A 
Electronics is very interesting to me. I have picked up pieces, but all of the testing and the understanding electronics is not my wheelhouse. But this fox is definitely my wheelhouse. Look at this fox. He is great. Now we did run comps on him and the comps were fairly good. He was like a paper mache and he was folk craft. I put him in my cart, but here is a spoiler alert. I did not pick him up and I'm not quite sure why. I think that day my cart was quite filled and I did pare down. This Goodwill also organizes by color, pretty much so. I mean, things really get moved around in this store. This store sees a lot of traffic for a small store. I think country folk really spend a lot of time. I liked this tissue box with its crackle finish and they wanted $1.99. I think that had damage. I think one of the panels was cracked, so I did not pick that up. Here's a dolphin figurine. I recently asked one of the Goodwill managers why they put the price sticker over the branding. It's so consistent in all the stores and they were a little bit vague about it. So I'm not quite sure what the thinking is because you know many of the people shopping want to see what brand they're buying and peel the sticker off. So we shall see if that changes. I thought this game would be good if it was new, but see the piece of tape? That tells me that it's not new. Most likely that would have been shrink wrapped if it was new. I don't pick up very many games, never puzzles that are opened. This next piece I thought was very good. I was gonna put this in my cart right away. I probably did put it in my cart for a while and I loved this. I do well with wooden plaques, especially if they're nautical or if they have eagles on them. But in the end, I did not pick this up because of the quality of the face. Now I know that's really specific and this probably would have sold, but I felt this was probably originally from like Lillian Vernon or a place like that. So while I did put it in my cart for a while, I felt that the aesthetic, the quality was not there and I put that one back. That would be quite big to ship. Not that that scares me, you know me, I'll, I'll ship a truck, I don't care. Thought the fish was interesting. I touch and look at almost everything. I want to see it all. I want to buy it all. That was a mass marketed piece, but very pretty. And as you can see, we are on the red pink aisle. Like I've said before in past videos, the wood or brown aisle is my number one aisle to find what I purchase. So there's a little hint there. If you get to a country thrift store, definitely look at the wood aisle or brown aisle. Again, this figurine had very good uh, markings. And for $5, I was definitely gonna look at this. This went into my cart. And you'll have to watch the whole video if I bought this and what this brings. Now, if you don't see any of these pieces in the whole video, that means that I did not pick them up for one reason or another. Most of the time it's damage. Second reason would be that I feel the profit capability is not there. I try to five times my money. So if I'm buying something for $5, I want it to bring minimum of $25. And that's like bare minimum. Now I don't always accomplish that, but that's my goal. This mirror was pretty. To me, it looked like a Greek or Roman design, maybe. Could be wrong about that. And this was, I believe this was Sirocco. Just a little mirror. And I put that back. I felt like it was so cheaply made that that could have been a mistake. Here was a doggy figurine, Irish setter. The reason I didn't take him, it was not marked. 
and I don't know enough about my figurines, you know, to look at something that's unmarked and say, oh, that's a such and such. I don't have a lot of that ability. A lot of what I'm doing and what I'm learning is to go by the markings. And here is the case shake. <laughs> Always shake those cases to see if we have glasses inside. Now that was coach, but I don't know that a coach eyeglasses case will bring a lot of money. This is Marjolaine Baston. Hallmark um, put this out. I did do quite well with a few vases and things like that, but I don't pick up a lot of Marjolaine Baston anymore. And the orange yellow aisle. I thought this teapot was nice, but again, no marking. I've heard that when it's not marked, it's made in USA. I don't know if that's true because a sticker could have fallen off. So that's a loose rule. This is a aspect, I think we call it mold. And again, I did not pick this up. You guys are probably saying, well, what does she have in her card? <laughs> I did leave this store with quite a bit. I thought the geraniums were good. I thought about it for a hot minute and then I put it back. I don't know that people are really hanging those on their wall. I could be wrong about that. Now this piece, absolutely yes, all day long. Again, this is probably a student piece, but see that aesthetic? That aesthetic is very good. Sorry about my finger in the lens there. That's an arts and crafts, um, you know, that type of style. I'm not saying it was made during that period, but mission style, arts and crafts, yes, all day long. Art Nouveau is another um, style that I look for. These glasses have cars etched on them. I have sold these. I think I have one left in my inventory. I won't be picking those up again. Very slow seller for me. No, I'm not saying for everybody else, maybe I priced too high. That could be why my stuff sits a little longer, which I'm just fine with. Their white area or white shelving is along the back wall. Again, I think this was a student piece because of the, the barb there in the glass. That's a mistake. There were some dolls and I'm passing a large box. I did take a look at that doll and it brought decent money. I'm gonna say $50, but I'm kind of over dolls. Now, <laughs> not to say you will never see me pick up another doll, but I'm over them right now for this week. <laughs> Next week, I'll probably buy a lot of 20 dolls knowing me. I thought that mirror was great. I would have bought that for my personal use if I needed one. I do not need another mirror, that's for sure. I liked this print. I liked the way they did it with a weathered wood rather than the traditional, you know, brown frame, but I did not pick that up. In this store, they do have a bins clothing section, and I have done well in this bin section. I'm trying to remember what the price is per pound. I think it's per pound, and I hopefully I'll zoom in on a, on a sign soon. I have done well. This day, I did not have time to dig, unfortunately. So this is what I wound up with in my trunk. As you can see, I did pick up quite a few things, and I will be doing a haul video, hopefully right after this video. But I want to give you guys a 360 of this surrounding area. Look at this place. It's amazing they put a Goodwill out here, but it's very well attended and I have done well here and it's very fun to shop here. So if you're ever in East Earl, Pennsylvania, look up the Goodwill. I believe it's on Weaverland Road. And as always, go out and get what's yours. Bye guys.
And now for a special announcement. My daughter Melissa, aka Fresh Bloomin' Clothing on eBay and Instagram, and Melissa with two L's on YouTube, is turning 40 on January 28th. If you'd like to send her a special card or a note of congratulations, I will put her information here on the screen. Or if you'd like to DM her through her Instagram or leave a comment there, I'm sure she would love it. Happy birthday, sweetie. I can't believe you're 40. I can't believe I'm old enough to have a 40-year-old daughter, but you're an amazing woman and daughter and friend, and I have learned so much from you, not only about reselling and about YouTube, but about life in general. So happy birthday. I can't wait to see you, and I hope your day is amazing.